Alright guys, this is gonna be a bossing guide. I know a lot of you are asking for it. I've been pretty busy, but uh, here we go. The first set of skills I have on the screen for you is for early game. The second set of skills is for mid game. And the third set of skills is for late game, okay? I also have on the screen the four spirits you're gonna need for bossing. These first three spirits are what you wanna be using for stage boss. And the last one her is a good replacement for one of these three if you do not have them. Also, I want to let you know, um, Sala does not work in Dimensional Rift. So her and your two highest level spirits is what you want to be using for Dimensional Rift. The first set of skills right here on the top left. Uh, this skill is a very basic skill, a skill set. It requires seven slots and foggers. Meaning that you need mana regen, okay? If your mana regen is lower than 20, you're not going to have a good time. Because Fulgris right here gets cast 2 times a second and uses 20 mana per second. You also need mana to cast your Hellfire and Giga Strike, okay? So you want to have ideally more than 20 mana regen. And you're going to be getting mana regen from uh, Luna Mana Dope. So mana dope is where you want to be leveling up early on. You want to have enough mana regen to sustain your builds. A good stopping point early on, I would say, is uh, when you get 20 mana regen. Right, right here, you see this number, mana recovery, you want to get 20 to 25, okay? 20 to 25 should sustain this top left build right here. But later on, you want to use uh, these skill sets, you are going to need to max out your mana dope, or else you won't have enough mana. And mana amplification is not very important. This skill right there will increase your max mana. You see the 221, that's what the mana amplification is. The reason why it's not that good is because that only increases your max mana pool. And your max mana pool only matters at the beginning or when you're casting very high mana cost skills. But as long as you have enough mana pool to cast all your skills, you do not need any more. What you need is mana recovery to fill up your mana pool so you can use it again. And uh, Wisdom of War is good. This is what you want to be leveling up uh, later on when you have enough mana. Uh, however, what's the point of increasing skill damage if you can't even use your skills because you don't have enough mana, right? So you want to get mana dope up. For companion uh, uh, promotion options, you want to do all attack. So every single companion needs to be attacked, okay? And your character promotional needs to be attacked as well for uh, stage boss and all bossing. This is why you shouldn't have any mana or crit damage in here. Crit damage is not as good as attack, so you want to replace crit damage and mana as fast as you can with all attack. So this top left skill is very easy uh, to understand. I'm not going to go ahead and show you because you just put the skills in and go do the boss, okay? Um, it does have three passive skills, three stacking passive skills. These first two uh, stacking passive require strikes, okay? So the more strikes you do, the faster they stack. Uh, speed sword will increase your attack speed, meaning the longer the fight goes on, the faster your attack speed. The faster your attack speed, the faster you stack both of them. So it's like a feedback loop for itself, speed sword pretty much. And earth will is the same. Every stack you get uh, bonus damage, okay? And then these two are your strike DPS skills, okay? They require a high attack speed to sustain, and that's why we have Speed Sword right here. And the reason why we have Fulgris is because Fulgris counts as a strike. So normally you get strikes by auto attacking, but Fulgris also counts as one. So sometimes you'll see it jump up by two. You see the strikes will jump up by two sometimes. That's Fulgris and auto attack go in at the same, well, relatively the same, not exact time, but close enough, where it goes, it displays two jumps in stacks. And then the last one right here is a uh, burning blade. This one right here is a burning sword. This one stacks by time, so every five seconds it goes up by 24.8. You can replace burning sword with fire sword if you have a meditation. Um, that might be a little better DPS because with meditation you can have fire sword at a hundred percent uptime. Like later on, you'll see these the mid game builds they use fire sword uh, and burning sword because we have meditation in here. Okay, so this skill right here, this top left one, 
Um, an alternative to that, if you have eight slots, is this bottom left one. Okay, so this one uses rage and meditation. That's the only difference compared to iron and wheel right here. Rage and meditation will give you a bigger damage boost than iron will. Okay, so iron will you see right here? It's a static, sixty-two point five percent. This is lower than everything else. It's lower than burning sword after like three stacks, or you know just fire sword straight out. But it is a constant 62, but like I said, if you have meditation, fire sword becomes 100% of time. So this just becomes, fire sword just becomes double the effect of iron will for the whole duration of the fight. Uh, same thing for flowing blade. Flowing blade will also have 100% uptime if you have meditation, okay, if you use meditation. <clears throat> and similarly, rage will have very close to 100% as well if you have meditation. So meditation makes your passes have 100% uptime, pretty much. That's the point of meditation. And meditation will also recharge some of your cooldown skills later on. So this is, this skill build I have active right here is this one right here. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use Rage, okay? Because in order to use Rage correctly, you need to have low HP. You see right here? Uh, you get attack per 1% HP missing. So for every 1% HP, you are missing, you get 2.1% attack. This is level 2 rage. At level 1 rage, it gives you 2%. So let's assume my rage is level 1 and it gives 2% per 1% HP missing. That means if I have 25% HP left, I'm missing 75%. At 2% attack gain per percent, that's 150% attack. So if I have 25% HP left, I get 150% attack. That's higher than Iron Will, that's higher than um, Fire Sword. It's lower than a max stack Burning Sword. However, you will not get a max stack on Burning Sword in Stage Boss because the timer is too short for that. Um, but in the Dragon Fight or in Dimensional Rift, Burning Sword can stack up to 10 times. So that means you just multiply this number by 10. So the max damage increase of Burning Sword is 248% for me. Uh, you get 24.8 per stack. So going back to the topic of Rage, how do we use Rage, okay? Because let's say you go into this stage box, look, right? Look, I have Rage, but my HP is full. You're not losing HP from the boss because the boss kind of sucks. So you gotta, you know, help the boss along a little bit. What you wanna do is you wanna equip your lowest accessory, okay? Once you see this pop up, it says better accessory available to equip. That's when you want to go into the stage boss. And then when you get close, wait for the cutscene to end, get close to it, pop the accessory swap. And when you swap that accessory from your lowest tier to your current tier, you put yourself at roughly 25% HP. And that will give Rage the big damage buff it needs. <clears throat> and this build, like I said, uh, is a stacking passive build, meaning the last five seconds of the fight is where you're going to be dealing most of your damage, okay? Let's go to a uh, the mid-game build. Let me swap over to the mid-game build real quick. So this mid-game build, this first one does not have rage. This one, it just straight up improved version of this one, okay? So the top left one, progression-wise, goes to this one. And let me go ahead and swap that over. So this button right here, this down arrow, if you click on it, you can equip all your skills at the same time, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, put the, this stuff in. Hellfire, Giga, and also a quick note, if you don't have Hellfire Slash or Giga Strike, you can use the lower tier, Flame Slash. So Flame Slash is the same skill as Hellfire, just slightly lower damage and lower tier. And that Power Strike is the lower tier version of Giga Strike, okay? Okay, so let's see. Pillar of Fire. Speed Sword. Earth Will. Burning and Fire Sword. So the reason why I want to show you this is because uh, this one is where you're going to have the 100% uptime on your buffs with Meditation. Okay, so you're flowing in your Fire Sword. If we go back into this boss. You see right here? You see how the timer... It, it's going down but after meditation it's pretty close to 100% right as the end you can cast it again 
And that's the point of this build, okay? This build is pretty much a strike build with Pillar of Fire. Oh, and also I noticed <laughs> Pillar of Fire is not an auto cast, so it hasn't been casting this whole time. But uh, let's, we can go ahead and redo this with Pillar of Fire turned on. Let's see, turn that thing on right there, and then we go back in. So this is the build. I'll just let you guys watch. So these builds, by the way, they get stronger and stronger. So it's okay if you're not doing enough damage to beat the timer at the start because like, uh, as the passive stack, you're gonna get more and more damage. Let's go to a harder stage. Uh, let's go to like, say, for example, this stage. Okay, let's see what happened on this stage. So on this stage, this is a still a mid game build. I, ideally, I wouldn't use this build for this boss. I will use one of the late game builds right here. But for demonstration purposes, let's see how well it does against this boss. You see, we're not beating the timer at all. But as we stack our passives, you can get do more and more damage. Those last hits of pillar flame. Well, I guess we'll beat it. Of fire, hellfire, and giga will do the most damage. By the way, I did pass uh, Black Mithril earlier today, so that's why I'm doing way more damage on my max stage. I should be, I think, 20 or 30 max stage higher than I am, but I haven't pushed yet because I want to save that for a bossing video on Rave build right here next, next time for you guys, okay? So for this build right here, right, this second mid-game build, it's a slightly different build. So far, we've covered three strike builds. These first three builds are all based on strikes. This build is a build that I came up with when I was climbing. Uh, when, when I did not have Demon Hunt, this skill right here, Demon Hunt, and I was getting stuck with these skills, I noticed that there is another build type I can go to. It's called a CDR build or a cooldown reduction build. Okay, So this build focuses uh, not on strike skills, Instead, it focuses on skills that require cooldown. For example, not hot blast, uh, that's not the one. Fire blast. You see, fire blast, this one is a um, cooldown, not a strike based. Same with blizzard, pillar of fire. These are all skills that require cooldown, not strikes. It doesn't matter how fast you're striking, they are on the cooldown. So that means meditation is going to be the carry here, and then we're going to use rage. All right. So the reason here we use iron will over earth will is because earth will requires attack speed to stack, right? If you have very slow attack speed, which this build does have, then this one will not stack very fast at all, meaning by the end of the fight, Iron Will will still probably have higher attack. So this build right here is a build I came up with, it's called a CC build, okay? So the point of this build is you want to max out Rage, okay? Because we don't have Demon Hunt, okay? Let's assume that. Let's assume we don't have Demon Hunt, you're stuck, you need more damage. What do you do? You put all your uh, damage passives in, you know, your Fire Sword, Burning boy, burning sword, earth, iron will, maybe even earth will if you have ten slots, or if you have nine slots and you don't have demon hunt, or you have ten slots, you have demon, you don't have demon hunt, you can put this one in. You want to put all your damage buffs in, even rage. Okay, so we ignore the attack speed buffs because we just want damage. And with this, right, with this, you want to swap your class and your sex ring. When you do a double swap, like if I go into the boss right here, I do a double swap, you see how low I go? I go lower than I was earlier when I only swapped my accessory. This is called double swapping with rage, and this is how you get the maximum amount of damage in uh, for your rage, okay? Right now, it's not a good showcase because I did pass Black Mithro. So my HP is higher, but normally you will not survive, okay? You will not survive a double swap on the proper stage you're supposed to be at. So what I'm going to show you is how to survive. 
what you're gonna do is you're gonna swap okay you're gonna turn off these skills okay so these three all your DPS skills will be turned off um, this is for maximum efficiency you actually want to turn off meditation and rage too but you know if you're lazy you don't want to do it what you want to do is you can uh, you can do is you can turn all these on besides these three skills meditation giga impact and blizzard so this is how you cc the boss okay we're gonna go into this fight we're gonna swap we're gonna freeze and as the freeze ends we're gonna stun the boss the stun missed so this is when you exit okay so these builds require you to retry the boss multiple times this is how you increase your max stage if you are stuck okay so this is what we do okay we double swap we blizzard and as blizzard ends the free sense we stun him we miss the stun again again a little bit rng the stun is a 50 50. um if you don't land it you just gotta quit out this is how I was quitting stages and how I got to stage 396 without Demon Hunt. So we're going to go back in. We're going to do a double swap. Wizard. As Wizard is about to end, you want to stun him. You see he's stunned. Reset. As the stun ends, Wizard again. And as the freeze ends right here, we're going to stun him again. And then stun missed. So that's the idea. The idea is of this skill build is to CC chain the boss okay with rage also I know I'm not I wasn't hitting the boss it, it was just for demonstrating how to use this CC build maybe this is a better demonstration for you guys so yeah you see th these are all the only three skills I need okay so we're gonna freeze the boss as the freeze about to end we're gonna stun the boss he's stunned reset back into blizzard and then back into a stun okay i missed the stun there but uh it, that's the idea here and this is how you utilize double swap on your rage okay it's a very complicated build um but unfortunately if you want to push backstage without some of these mythic tier skills this is what you're going to be doing you're going to be double swapping with rage and trying to survive with dodge rng and stun rng if you guys are still confused on this CC build, I can make a separate video just dedicated to that. But for now, let's move on to the mythic skills, okay? So this is going to be your weight gain, your weight gain uh, skills. This right here I have for stage boss pushing. So the first set right here, right? You see this one? This set of skills has pillar of fire. But I want to let you know one thing about Pillar of Fire, okay? So Pillar of Fire has a hitbox, meaning you go to this boss. Right? You see the, you see how big this boss is? This dude is tiny. When I use Pillar of Fire, you see it's hitting behind the boss. It's not even hitting the boss. So for small bosses like this, Pillar of Fire is not very good. Look at that. Most of the hits are missing. So what you want to do is you want to replace Pillar of Fire with... Uh, Giga Strike or Hellfire Slash, which one, whichever one is higher level and does more damage, and uh, that's the difference between these two. And the other difference is Speed Sword versus Rage. Okay, if you have enough HP to survive the boss, you will do more damage with Rage over Speed Sword, but Speed Sword will get two Demon Hunts off more consistently for Rage. Okay, let's go ahead and try to clear some max stage. I am a little bit over leveled. I'm gonna turn on this uh, hotkeys. All right, so the, this is how we do this. Okay, so first you wanna. Mm, I forgot to swap. Okay, so you want to accessory swap, so you can use rage effectively. So when you get to the boss, you swap, you rage, you use all your skills. Reset. Oh, I'm gonna beat this boss without rage. So I'm gonna do a little bit of pushing. I'll show you guys a rave build in the future maybe uh, video on how to use rave right now I'm just a little bit over level yeah yeah way too over leveled so the idea of a uh, rave 
is right here, okay? This is a immortal skill, Wraith. What Wraith does is for the last five seconds of the fight, it, whatever damage you did, this skill will redo that 70% of that damage, okay? You can't skill awaken it uh, five times, to, so you will get this up 10 times. 10% each time and requires M1 to do it. This is a skill from Ore. Once you get Ore, you will have this skill right here, okay? But until then, this is, you see this gold gold glowy circle? When you unlock Ore, you will unlock that uh, skill. I'm gonna do some pushing actually. If you guys wanna watch for the rest of this uh, video, you can. Let's see how far I can push. We're actually gonna do this first set uh, the first set will probably be more consistent and faster because we do not need to accessory swap. Since we're over leveled, we won't be accessory swapping. I also forgot to use fire sword right there. So the reason why I'm not using uh, Rave is because I want to use it when all my passives are a little bit higher stacked. Also, I'm waiting for Wog. When Wog hits right there, you want to use it. Uh, there's no, <laughs> you guys won't even get to see Rave. <laughs> Just doing too much damage. Oh, I guess we'll just keep pushing then. Oh, you see right here, this, this is a big boss. That means Pillar of Fire is better here. So if I don't beat him, which I don't think will happen, but just, just you know, let's pretend if I don't beat him, uh, I want to back out and swap Giga Strike with Pillar of Fire. We're still nowhere close to our max stage because generally speaking, you want the boss to be maybe like 30%, 40% when the timer hits 0 0.5 seconds. Uh, that's when you're gonna be using Rave. Okay, so one thing I forgot to tell you is, you see Wog right here? Wog comes off cooldown, Demon Hunt, Pillar of Fire, uh, Meditation, Demon Hunt again, and then Wraith. So that's the combo, okay? The combo is when Wog w hits 19.5 seconds, or 19.8 seconds, you wanna pop Wraith, use your Demon Hunt and Pillar of Fire, meditate, use Demon Hunt again, and then, Rave, okay? So that's the combo right there. But I don't get to use it because the boss is just dies. That also means if your demon hunt is about to be ready but your walk is not yet, you want to wait for walk before you use your demon hunt. I don't know if I'll ever get to show you guys how Rave works. <laughs> I have like 20 stages left maybe before I hit my max. Yeah, they're just dying too quick. I mean, I guess if I miss... Look at that. Oh my god. See, when Wog pops, 1DH just nukes them. 
and you're supposed to do two DH, which extra nukes them, and then pop Rafe, which is like a huge, massive nuke. Yeah, they just way too squishy. Alright, we're gonna keep pushing though. If you guys wanna end the video right here, you can. If you wanna watch the rest of this uh, stage push, you need to stay here and chill with me. Uh, I used it early there, but you know what? Whatever. It's not like we'll need it. Alright, we're gonna keep pushing, but we're gonna actually just focus on the game. And then we're gonna meditate. DH again. Unlucky knockback. Pillar of fire again. Oh, I miss. Oh, I miss. It's okay. <laughs> so that's what the rave animation is. You can just see it later when I actually use it. So Demon Hunt hits for seven times. The first six times does 50% of the damage. And the last hit of Demon Hunt does the other 50%. So that last hit right there is very important to be landing. Because if you miss that, you miss most of your DH damage. Not even close. Also, my fire sword is not casting. Auto casting. Oh, you know why I don't have auto turn on? <laughs> Alright, we're gonna wait for log. Yeah, maybe you guys get to see Rave this time. Nope. <laughs> he just gets nuked. So yeah, when Wog pops, the boss just gets nuked. That's why we won't be beating the timer normally with Rave until Wog pops. All right, let's see here. Do we have time for? I think we have time for extra DH here. Alright, so we want to save this DH for walk right here. Oh, unlucky knockback. Uh, we can't double DH, I don't think. Uh, we don't need it. So knockbacks hurt a lot because when you get knocked back you can't get strikes in to stack your DH and as you see right here DH is our primary source of damage. Alright gotta focus here. Start nuking the boss, the DH. We get another one in, DH and then this is the one you want to walk. So that right there we got one pillar of fire in during raid window and two DH in. But the boss died before we could unleash our actual biggest damage nuke, which is Rave right here. Oh, that was a mistake. I accidentally raved. Well, I guess you guys get to see what Rave looks like. <laughs> Baby damage. I would restart. But because we're over leveled, maybe we can beat it with. By even with that huge mess up.
Yeah. I fat fingered the rave at the beginning there. You don't want to use rave until Wobby's up. So you can stack the H's. Man, how long is this video gonna be? Oh, that's early. Walk, I mean, rave too early. But it doesn't matter. Four seventy. Maybe ten more. You can probably push ten more easily. Oh no, we're not gonna beat it. Look at the timer. Nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> Here we go. Big damage. Big damage. Reset. Big damage. Huge damage. So when you get knocked back by the boss, uh, like v every time you want to restart. Oh, I messed up. I was talking. I used pillar fire. It's fine. You see that knock up right there? Because of the knock up, we didn't get this DH off during our rave window. And also, I fat fingered the pillar fire. It's whatever. So you want to do 3 DH, ideally, before rave, and then 2 during rave. So a total of 5 DH during the fight. Oh, that knockup hurt. I won't have enough... Yeah, knockup again. Oh, knock back, sorry, not knockup. Oh, no. Too many knockbacks. That was like terrible RNG, but we still beat it though, because of being over leveled. But normally though, later on, I will have to back out and redo, retry when I get knocked back that many times. Like what is this guy doing? He's also knocking me back a lot. Jesus Christ. Yeah, we're not going to get that DH off and get another one before Wog, so we're just going to save it for Wog. Don't knock me back. Oh, okay, there we go. Easy. Now we rave, okay? This is when we want to rave. We're getting close. But also knock back RNG. I am not using rage yet. So I'm still missing a damage buff. Which means I can push even further if I do rage. If he doesn't knock me back, this is going to be like a textbook rave. Yeah. Oh, it's too much damage. We have way too much damage. Keep pushing. And I apologize about keyboard sounds, if you can hear the keyboard, but... Not much I can do. Mechanical keyboards.
Alright, <clears throat> now we save up everything for walk and rave. 19.5, 19.9. Now we do Fire Sword, DH, Rave. And now we Rave. That's the combo, by the way. That's a full combo, that fight. Uh, the boss just died during the middle of the Rave hit. Fire sword. Ooh, this is this is a late DH. We're not gonna have another one up when Wa comes up, especially if we get knocked back. Yeah, it's just barely not up. I think we can still do uh, two though, easily. Next one. So 12.5 seconds is where you want to be, like 12.2, 12.5 is where you want to be for this third DH if you don't get knocked back. 19. No! That knockback suck. Oh gosh. Don't knock me bad. Ah, uh, we might want to retry this one. Yeah, okay. First stage we're retrying. 477. Oh, I missed. You see that right there? I missed my DH hit. The big one. The final hit. Which is most of our damage. Oh, what is this knockback? Never lucky. Because of that knockback, we won't get to cast 3 DHs before rave. We can still do it. I also should have waited for Noah to pop. I forgot to tell you guys, yeah, Noah popping is very important. Very important for later on. I've been ignoring Noah pops at the end because I have had extra damage. But it looks like I might start having to worry about Noah. Knockback back sucks. Especially when you get knocked back during strong current cooldown um, active because that's where you have the highest attack speed. Again, too many knockups, no third DH, we're gonna save it. We're gonna rave, pillar, DH, med, fire sword, DH again, and rave. I didn't do the Noah pop again. Maybe I'll try to do it here. So I'm going to show you what the Noah pop looks like, okay? Let me do three, let me do three. Oh, knock back, stupid. Okay, when you get knocked back like that, maybe it's again. When you get knocked back like that, I don't, there's no way again, there's no way. I don't think I can beat this one. Too many knock clicks. Oh my god, way too many knock clicks. Trying to focus. Knock back.
Damn it. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna focus on Noah. Too many knockbacks for 3 DH. So wait for Noah to pop. Right there. You see that? My complaint. Uh, my spirit pop. No knockbacks, please. Oh, that's bad. That's really bad. I didn't get the H off. Oh, I used Reef. Uh, that's a mistake. Well, looks like we need to get lucky with knockbacks if you want to be this one. Also, we can also change our build to be this guy. That's also the other option. I should have held that. No, oh. Getting knocked back during rave is the worst. We need some dodge RNG on the knockbacks. Okay, so far no knockbacks. Now we folk you know what? As I say it. Jinx myself. I uh, we can't get two DH off. I don't think we can get the two DH off. Oh we did! Uh, Wog was inactive. No! That was my bad. We still beat it, but that was my bad. So Wog um, got turned off on the second DH. But because we got the second DH off, our Rave did more damage. So we could have even we could have done even more damage if we did the Wog correctly. No knockback so far. Let's go. All right, we're gonna do this correctly. Hopefully, where's Noah? I need you, Noah. Give me, give me the oh. timing. <sighs> timing. Okay, I'm gonna switch my build up and do rage, but I'm gonna stop right here for the video. And I can make a separate video on pushing backstage in the future because most of this video just been pushing stages that's been that we've been over leveled for. So, all right. See you guys. If you have any questions on the bossing builds for earlier, like mid game or early game, you can leave it in the comments and let me know. I'll now reply to that. See you.